Hi, hello everybody. Welcome back to THE Student Webinars. So today we are joined by the wonderful Stevens Institute of Technology and they are here to discuss all things to do with career, how to launch your career to new heights and how to really maximize your studies from this particular university. All right, we are joined by Lauren here today who will be your main host and I will be here in the background to help with anything technical as usual. And guys, if you have questions, please do send those in to us. We will be here for the whole hour with you and the questions are gonna be open in the Q&A chat just at the bottom there of your screen. And we'll get to those at the very end. So I will hand you over to Lauren. Perfect. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Lauren Schaum, and I am a graduate admissions advisor here with Stevens Institute of Technology. Um, and as we said, we will be talking about how to launch your career to new heights um, with a Stevens degree. So just to give you a little bit of background about Stevens, um, you can see in the picture here, this is our campus. Um, we are located in Hoboken, New Jersey, um, which is right across the river from New York City. You can see that in the picture. This is a picture of our actual campus and you will see right across the river, um, New York City with the Empire State Building. All right. So we are known as the Innovation University. Um, Stevens was established in 1870 by America's first family of inventors. Um, Stevens actually introduced the first mechanical engineering degree in the U.S., um, but today we like to say that we prepare leaders for a technology-focused world. We are inspired by humanity, powered by technology. All right. And just a few university facts about Stevens. Um, what is actually very unique about Stevens is that we actually have more graduate students than undergraduate students. We have about 5,271 graduate students um, with a 16 student to one faculty member ratio. We have about 335 full-time faculty teaching all of our programs and our courses. We have over 50 master's programs, as well as over 20 PhD programs. And we have about 17 active research centers where our professors, as well as our PhD students are conducting um, research throughout campus. I do also like to point out that about 96% of students who are seeking jobs after graduation secure employment within three months of graduation, with the average compensation being about $87,000 and the average signing bonus being about $14,000. All right. So at the graduate level, we have three different um, schools within Stevens Institute of Technology that house all of our programs. We have the Charles V. Schaefer Jr. School of Engineering and Science. We have the Stevens School of Business that houses all of our business programs. And then we also have the only one of its kind, the School of Systems and Enterprises um, that houses all of our programs that have to do with complex systems and organizations, um, so, such as engineering management and software engineering. All right. So the way that we like to break down all of our programs is by an acronym that we call MFACES. So the way that it is broken down, um, as you will see on the screen, is with our management programs that include programs such as an MBA, engineering management, sustainability management, and programs such as that. We then also have our finance um, programs, which include finance, financial engineering, financial technology and analytics, anything to do with finance. Um, we then have our analytics programs, which are programs such as business intelligence and analytics, systems analytics, um, data science, we also have our computing programs, such as computer science, information systems, and software engineering, just to name a few. Um, our big one are engineering programs with biomedical engineering, mechanical engineering, systems engineering, um, ocean engineering, just name a few, but there are a ton of engineering programs. And then our sciences, which are chemistry, physics, math, and chemical biology. All right, so just to talk to get start talking about, you know, really how to elevate and launch your career. 
there are a few things that uh, especially we at Stevens like to focus on, right? We all know that coming up um, right now, we are coming up into the age of data where everything is being um, moved to intelligence. Um, everything's being moved to the internet, all of that. So here at Stevens, we do like to stay up to date. We're constantly changing our curriculum, changing our methods to help you secure um, jobs in an ever-changing um, kind of career network. There is a surge in data and tools. Um, there's new business models these days that, that leverage networks and intelligence. Um, and you will see that we are staying up to date with that, with everything in our software engineering programs, our data science programs, computer science programs to make sure we stay up to date with the latest technology and the latest trends that we see. And then of course, there's always your networks, whether that's physical networks, digital networks, social networks, um, networking with your professors, networking with those out, um, our alumni out in the um, career workforce, everything that has to do with that. Obviously, we, we are just at the beginning. So we will see these trends kind of sort start to continue and intensify. Um, and we wanna make sure that our students always stay up to date with where the trends are going as they continue. All right. So here are some graduate student kind of career outcomes from, I just pulled some of our most popular programs. You will also see it divided by school. So just for some of our programs, you'll see that those who graduate with our computer science master's degree, within three months of graduation, um, we do have a 99% um, employment rate with an average com compensation of about 92,000. Um, business intelligence and analytics within our school of business, about a 98% employment rate after three months of graduation with um, 102,000, 103,000 um, average compensation right after graduation. Um, and then an example from our School of Systems and Enterprises, um, software engineering is at 100% employment um, after three months after graduation with about a 98,000 average compensation. Now, obviously we are very proud of these numbers, but as it says, it is an average compensation. So obviously some students do end up earning um, higher or a little bit lower than the average number that you see here on the screen. And I will say that this does really speak to all of the career services that we offer, our faculty who are really big on networking with their students and make sure they help them not only inside the classroom, but outside of the classroom. Um, and it really does speak um, through these numbers. All right. So just a little bit of information about employment opportunities through CPT and OPT um, for our international students. So CPT is something that you complete during your studies, um, either at Stevens or elsewhere in the US. Um, before you're eligible for CPT or co-curricular practical training, you must have studied and completed one academic year at the university first. Um, once you've completed one full academic year, usually a fall and spring semester or a spring and then fall semester, you are then eligible for CPT. In order to um, kind of apply for CPT or be eligible for CPT, the employment that you have found must be directly related to your field of study. So for example, if you're here studying computer science, um, your employment through CPT must be directly related somehow to computer science. You are able to um, participate in CPT for up to a year and it has no impact on your um, OPT eligibility for after you graduate with your master's degree. After one year of doing CPT, if you decide to continue CPT or if you're continuing your studies and that's why you're continuing CPT, then it, that is when it does affect your OPT eligibility and your OPT will be reduced by the amount of CPT that you've taken over that one year. Now, after you um, study here, you are eligible for what we call optional practical training or OPT. Now, keep in mind that in order to be eligible for OPT, you must um, have graduated from a STEM designated program. Now, here at Stevens, I 
believe almost all of them except for two or three are STEM designated, meaning that you would qualify for OPT. So when you graduate from your STEM designated degree, whether that be um, the MBA, computer science, software engineering, anything like that, you may then apply for an additional 24 month extension to work here within the US. So yep, so after um, you finish your degree and you do have to have taken your degree within at least 12 months, if not longer, but you have to have stayed for at least a full year, then you are eligible for, for OPT. All right. So here are just the, some of the career services um, and technologies that we use here at Stevens. Um, a lot of uh, universities in the U.S. will have a similar kind of career service center. But here at Stevens, um, we take our career services, our career advising really seriously, because obviously our job just does not end at just teaching you the information or the program that you need to know. We really want to help you get to that next step um, through our career services in order to help you secure employment for after graduation. So some of our career services that we offer are, we do offer one-on-one -on -one or group career advisement meetings. Um, we offer individual career management action planning where they will go over your career goals and things such as that and kind of how to reach those goals, next steps that you need to take towards those goals. Um, because although obviously you're here studying um, and getting your master's or PhD degree, you do kind of want to think towards the future and think, well, what am I going to be doing with this degree? And what are the steps and actions that I need to take in order to get to my goal for after I graduate? They also help you with self-assessments. And these are the types of assessments. If you're not really sure um, what you want to do after graduation, you're not really sure um, kind of where your interests lie necessarily within the field, these self-assessments that they help you take will kind of give further insight and direction into maybe the areas that you want to look into um, for after you graduate career-wise. We do also have kind of career development workshop series that our Career Services Center puts on, which are workshops on varying topics um, that will kind of help you with the um, kind of career roles, whether that's interview workshops, um, resume workshops, just workshops that help you get ready to enter into the workforce, to prepare for interviews, to prepare for um, kind of the job. Um, we do also have um, kind of resume cover letter critiques where you can bring your resume, you can bring your cover letter into the Career Services Center and they will look over it with you to ensure that it's the best that it can be for when you go out there to start applying for jobs. Um, this is really important, as you know, as with any jobs, we all have to submit a, a resume. Um, a lot of the time you have to submit a cover letter. So you really want to make sure that it's in like tip top shape um, before you go ahead and submit it to these companies that you're really interested in working for. Additionally, our Career Services Center also offers interview training and practice. So once you submit your resume and your cover letter, when you get that interview, our Career Services Center will sit down with you and work on interview training, um, ask you the tough questions, ask you questions that maybe you don't realize that a lot of interviewers ask in order for, to prepare you so you're not caught off guard when you do go in for the interview process. We have a lot of social media marketing, um, marketing our students, marketing jobs that are available, marketing Stevens. We have employer information and networking sessions. Um, like I said earlier, our faculty members alongside our Career Services Center are really big on networking. A lot of our faculty members come directly from industry, whether that be from New York City right across the river or from other areas within the US and even internationally. So not only um, do our Career Services Center host networking sessions, but the networking kind of world or field for our faculty member, it's a big network as well. And they're always willing um, and going out of their way to help their students make these networking connections in order to better help you with your um, 
career goals after graduation. We also have on-campus recruitment, which means that um, twice a semester, we host on-campus um, career fairs where in companies either from New York City um, or New Jersey or the surrounding states do come on campus specifically to recruit our students. Um, so that happens twice um, a semester and you will always see the students come out dressed in their suits and ties um, with their resumes in hand, ready to make those connections at our career um, fairs. And maybe it's not necessarily um, for right after you graduate. It could be for those CPT opportunities to still gain employment while you are studying. It could be for internships. It could be really even before you graduate. And then obviously it is very helpful for when you are looking for jobs um, for when you graduate. We also have something that we call the handshake system. So basically um, once you are a student at Stevens, within our platform called My Stevens, there is a handshake system. And all of our students use this system to post their resume, to look for jobs. Um, a lot of companies are posting jobs on this system. So it's really just an online tool where you can promote yourself and your resume um, and see what employers are posting jobs on the system. We also have an online job board called Go Going Global for maybe those international jobs. If you're not interested in staying in the US after you graduate, um, that is really helpful as well. All right, and as I discussed previously, we do have a lot of career development events. So like I said, that is our career planning workshops um, that I encourage everyone to join um, because you can never plan too much or know too much when you are preparing for either your resume, an interview, anything like that. Um, we do have corporate information sessions. Um, a lot of times we also have businesses come to Stevens to kind of like host talks and talk about their business and give you more information about their corporation. We have on-campus recruiting opportunities. Um, and not only is that done through the Career Services Center, but our schools as well. For example, the School of Business may host their own um, on-campus recruiting opportunities uh, specifically for their students, for those who are trying to go out into the business world, whether that's finance, um, information systems, anything like that. So not only do, does um, the Career Services Center host bigger uh, career fairs, the schools individually also host smaller career fairs on their own for their students. So you have a plethora of opportunities to meet these businesses, to make the networking connections um, and kind of prepare yourself for after graduation. All right. So in general, um, kind of a career management action plan or a roadmap to think about when you are thinking about kind of where you are today and where you wanna be two to five years from now, whether that's after your master's, your PhD, um, even after a few years in the career world, thinking about kind of where you want to move up, if you want to make any career changes, anything like that. So as you can see on the screen, it is kind of an ever going um, revolving steps. Um, I feel like no matter where you are in your career, you can always be thinking about where you want to go two to five years from now. So it really all starts with the job search and networking, right? So once you job search and network, um, whether that be uh, within while during your time at Stevens, that will be a big component. Like I say, I'm really big on networking. Um, although, like I said, you are here to study make sure that no matter where you go to university, that you are always networking with your fellow students, with the alumni, with the faculty members, because you never know when those connections can lead to an opportunity. Um, obviously, there's also the traditional job searching, whether it's on websites, at career fairs, everything like that. So you'll start there. You always want to incorporate self and career exploration, so explore within yourself kind of where you want to go, what you want to do, um, explore different avenues of careers. If you're not set on kind of the type of career you want to go into, look into the, all the fields 
that your program of interest or your area of interest has to offer because there are many different avenues that you can take, right? From there, you will start goal setting and planning. Um, set your goals, set where you wanna be two to five years from now. Maybe you, obviously you will start as a lower level employee, but five years from now, do you wanna be a manager? Do you wanna be a senior associate? Think about where you want to be and how you plan on getting there. And again, this is where a career services center can come in to help you kind of think all of these things out. So think about um, the actions that you can take to get there and what you can focus on. You always want to be marketing yourself, whether that's through um, platforms such as LinkedIn, um, even within your courses at, during your time at Stevens. You always want to be putting your best foot out there, right? Because as I just said previously, you never know where an opportunity can come from. So make sure you're always marketing yourself, whether it's social media platforms, um, in-person, networking, anything, always make sure you're marketing yourself and putting your best, step, best foot forward. And then, of course, there's the interview preparation. So always be preparing for your interviews, whether that's through... Um, your resume, your cover letter, once you get the interview, working on your interviewing techniques, practicing the questions, common um, interview questions, everything like that. Again, where a career services center can come in to help you practice these interview techniques. Um, and then after all of this, hopefully you get the job. But as I said, right, we don't always stay in the same job for 20 plus years. So a lot of these steps you will continue to um, take and think about throughout your um, career when you want to make those career changes, when you want to think about, okay, what are the next steps? So this is a really kind of great path or action plan to always keep in mind. All right. So just here at Stevens, um, here is kind of a slide of the majority of our companies recruiting here at Stevens. So you'll see that a, a lot of our big recruiters are JP Morgan and Chase, Motorola, Citibank, Verizon, um, ADP, IBM, just to name a few. Um, these are some of our bigger ones, but ob obviously the, this does not encompass every single company that does come here and recruit at Stevens or that are graduates have gone to work at. So just a few things to keep in mind when you are choosing a um, university to study at with the thought of your career and your career goals in mind. So number one is, is that the location matters. The location of a university matters. How close are they to the bigger cities that have the job opportunities? Um, so obviously at Stevens, we are right across the river from New York City, um, one of the biggest cities and career hubs in the U.S. Um, so when you are thinking about universities such as that, do they have the opportunity, whether during your studies or during that OPT or after your studies, to um, kind of get, a get one of those bigger jobs, whether that be... Um, at a financing center such as um, Morgan, Stan or Morgan Stanley or things such as that. Um, so always keep that in mind when you are thinking about universities, whether for a master's degree, PhD, anything like that. Right. Again, access also matters. What, not only access to the city, because obviously this is a picture of New York City, and like I said, we are right across the river. So access does matter. Um, more specifically, for our access to New York City, you can get to New York City in about 10 minutes through various ways. We have bus, we have train, we have the ferry. So it is really easy to get into the city um, for those job opportunities. But when I'm thinking of access, not only does access to New York City matter, but the access that the university provides you from those cities, from New York City matters as well. So not only going to New York City, but what do they bring to you through those career fairs, making sure that recruiters from New York City come to Stevens um, in order to recruit you 
and to do interviews on the site and everything like that. So that matters as well. And when you are choosing a university, think about the access to big cities or to the job opportunities, but also think about what that university brings to you in terms of access. All right. Again, personalized coaching. So like I said, our career services center offers one-on-one -on -one coaching, um, group coaching, resume um, reviewing. They will do everything they can for you as an individual to make sure that you are as ready as possible to go out into the workforce um, and obtain those jobs. So like I said, make sure that you have, you go to a university that has that personalized coaching, whether it is through a career services center or through um, the faculty. Like I said, our faculty are also really big on helping their students. A lot of the time they will sit down with you one-on-one -on -one and offer you career guidance, offer you networking opportunities. Make sure there is that investment in, your, in yourself from the university, from the faculty that goes beyond just teaching you the program um, or the courses. And then lastly, you always wanna make sure that there's a deep alumni network that you can access um, because that is also very important. You'll be able to see where they go and work. A lot of times our alumni come back to host talks, um, to meet with students in order to help them pro progress past Stevens. So that will also be a really big um, component because obviously they've graduated from Stevens now. They're out in the workforce. They have the knowledge that is helpful to our current students on, okay, where do I go from here? How do I get a job? What are some tips that you can give me? So that is a very, very big component as well. Um, speaking of deep alumni network, I am just gonna go over a few of our alumni that we've had graduate from Stevens over the last few, um, I guess, decades. But, um, and I will highlight a few. But here on this first page, you can just see a few of the programs that our students took. So on here, you'll see computer science, chemical engineering, um, biomedical engineering, as well as the company that they ended up at and the position that they have now. Um, so you see, for example, here we have um, GOA Lin, who was uh, did a master's of engineering in electrical and computer engineering, graduated in 2015 and is now working as a software engineer at JP Morgan and Chase. Um, we have Patara who uh, did a master's of engineering in chemical engineering, graduated back in 1984, and is now the CEO of City Indonesia. So just to highlight a few more, more depth. So we have Vishika who came to Stevens in 2008. Not only did she do her master's in computer science with us, but then she continued um, and stayed with us to complete her PhD in computer science, finally completed her PhD in 2015, and now works as a senior principal data science scientist. And that is an option for a lot of students. You may decide to come, over, come and do your master's, stay with us through your PhD, and then go out into the workforce. Mm -hmm. Then we have Rohan who came to Stevens in 2014. He um, started with his master's in computer science, um, graduated with his master's in computer science. But while he was here, he had an internship with Barclays. Um, after he graduated, he obviously went out into the workforce and now he works as a senior manager for data strategy at Capital One. And then you will see, we also have someone who came to us um, in 2016 to start their degree with Stevens. Um, they pursued their master's in computer science. During their time here, they got an internship at Green Choice, and now she works as a senior software engineer developing multi-model um, and multilingual um, conversational AI for the United Nations. So again, right, bringing in that factor is we can see that AI, artificial intelligence technology is very up and coming, and we are always trying to help our students stay up to date um, with this ever evolving technology focused world. All right, and then just a few more specifically more so from our business school and kind of where they have um, ended up in recent years. You'll see that we have people who now have jobs at Apple, 
at JP Morgan, at Google, at Morgan Stanley, at IBM. Um, so yeah. And then just to kind of close it out, I did just want to talk about um, funding opportunities, specifically for students um, that can help you kind of fund your education when you are looking to study here. Um, so all of our full-time master's students are eligible for what we call the Provost Master Scholarship. All of our full-time students are automatically considered for scholarship at the time of application review. Um, so there's nothing extra that you need to fill out. When your application is reviewed for an admission decision, you will also automatically be considered for scholarship. Now, this scholarship is merit-based, um, and it is a partial scholarship. However, um, you will be informed of any scholarship that is being offered to you when you receive your admission letter. On top of that, we, we also have our assistantship options, whether that's a graduate assistantship, teaching assistantship, research assistantship. Now, many um, graduate programs in the US offer these assistantship opportunities to their students, which can help fund their education. Um, specifically for us, our teaching assistant assistantships and our research assistantships are um, kind of more so reserved for our PhD students, but master's students are eligible to apply for them through their department. So if you are studying chemistry, they would be available for you through your chemistry department after your first year of study. And the reason for this is, is that we just like our master's students to get to know the faculty first, get to know the research being conducted um, before they do go ahead and apply for any sort of assistantship. Obviously, if you are coming here for PhD, um, you are looking at that research um, and kind of our faculty members and the research that they are conducting while you are applying for your program of interest. Um, these assistantships can be in the form, like I said, of research or teaching assistantships, and they often provide a tuition waiver and or a stipend. M most of our PhD um, students are fully funded through these tuition waivers and stipends. You also have the option of loans, um, student loans. So international students can also consider taking out private loans to fund their graduate education. We have a lot of our international students who take out loans to fund um, their studies here at Stevens. The only thing that is important to know is that when you're thinking of taking out student loans, you should really shop around at the different loan companies because elig eligibility criteria may vary depending on the lender. So you really wanna look at all of your lender options before choosing one. Um, and make sure you meet all of those eligibility requirements and kind of what is the best loan provider that works for you. Um, lastly, or not lastly, two more things, uh, but there are obviously sponsorship opportunities. So a lot of international students can also seek sponsorship from their home country or other organizations to help them um, fund their studies over here in the U.S., and then what we refer to as our graduate assistantships, but are also on-campus jobs um, here at Stevens and at a lot of universities within the US. Um, so F1 students or students who are here on an F1 visa can work specifically on Stevens for up to 20 hours a week during the semester. Um, all students are eligible to apply to any of our on-campus jobs once they start their studies here. So for example, if you come here to study for the fall 2024, 2024 semester, as soon as you come to Stevens um, and arrive before that fall semester, you are you are eligible to start applying for these on-campus jobs. They are all throughout campus, um, whether it's in my office, the Office of Graduate Admissions, um, the Athletic Center, the Food Hall, anything like that, there's jobs everywhere within the departments, whether you're a grader um, that helps the professor grade papers, grade tests, they, um, on-campus jobs are offered all throughout campus. Again, you are eligible to work um, 20 hours per week during the semester. And a lot of the time, these positions help students earn the extra income that can help cover their living um, expenses, whether that's rent, food, anything like that. Um, yeah, so that is it for me. Thank you so much for listening. Um, but yeah, I guess we'll open it up for questions. Mm -hmm. 
Ah, oh, Lauren, thank you so much for your presentation. A lot of information there, really, to unpack. But we do have some questions here, so I'm just going to jump straight in and ask mm -hmm. you a few. Um, hi there. Are we allowed to have internships alongside our studies? I think you touched on this briefly. So you are. So there are a few different options. You are allowed to have internships alongside your study. Um, like I said, there is also the CPT option, which is the co-curricular practical training in which that you are eligible to apply for after your one year of study. Now, if you are going the CPT route, um, like I said, you do have to make sure that any job that you get and then are applying for CPT for relates to the program that you are here studying. So whether that's computer science, biomedical engineering, you just have to make sure it relates to the program. And then on top of that, you are um, also eligible to um, do internships. You would have to talk more with our IS office, which kind of oversees the visa regulations and everything like that. But of a lot of our international students do, especially towards their last summer before they graduate, get an internship um, here in the U.S. Okay, brilliant. And how about English levels? How high do the English levels have to be? Yep. So here at Stevens, we accept um, TOEFL tests, IELTS tests, or Duolingo. Um, there is different minimum requirements for each. Um, for IELTS, it is six. TOEFL is an overall score of 74. And then for Duolingo, it is a 110. Now that is for Stevens in particular, but I will say that usually in the US, they are all around the same range. Um, but we do accept any of the three um, English proficiency tests. Awesome. And what is it like to live in the U.S.? How expensive is the cost of living at the moment? Yeah. So I will say it varies differently on where you are in the U.S. Um, obviously, when you are closer to a big city, such as New York City, the cost of living will be a little bit higher than when you're out in like rural America. Um, specifically here in Hoboken, Hoboken is a little bit more of a more expensive city. However, Hoboken is only one square mile. It's a very small city. So a lot of their, a lot of our students do live in the surrounding areas, whether that's um, an area that we call Jersey City, um, Weehawken, and it is close enough to get to campus. It's only about a 15 minute um, train ride to campus. So they do live in the surrounding areas just because it is a little bit cheaper than living directly in Hoboken. Okay, that's actually perfect because there's a question here about accommodation. Um, they don't want to be scammed. You know, what are the best kind of practices really when finding accommodation over there? Yeah, so there's quite a few. I will say that um, we have an office called our Graduate Student Life Office that specifically meets with these students and provided, provides resources that helps you make sure that you're not getting scammed. They give you connections to the best realtors to work with or the best companies and websites to work with in order to secure housing here. Um, but I will always say, whenever you are signing to live anywhere here or gain accommodation, always make sure you're reading your lease thoroughly. Do not sign anything before reading your lease thoroughly and making sure you understand all of it. Yeah, I can and to go off, to go off of that as well, I just wanted to add that um, a lot of our students also uh, utilize Facebook as well. There's a lot, there's a lot of groups on Facebook um, that the students use to connect and find roommates that way too. And our graduate student life office will probably direct you to those Facebook um, groups as well to help you better find roommates and find a better connection and find a place to live. Amazing. Thank you for the advice. Um, that'll be really valuable, I'm sure. Um, are there any opportunities to network outside of school and meet future employers? I believe so. Yep. So obviously, um, while you are a student here, you are kind of limited to the job opportunities that you can have, whether it's through CPT or on-campus jobs here at Stevens. Um, but you are able to meet with employers outside of Stevens, whether it's for internships during the summer or for career opportunities after you graduate. Like I said, through our career fairs or the schools a lot of the time are hosting um, smaller kind of career fairs um, particular to their fields, whether that's the School of Business or the School of Systems and Enterprises. So there are lots of opportunities to meet um, employers outside of Stevens and all throughout the year, um, events are always being hosted to meet these kind of employers and explore these opportunities. Awesome. And how about funding? Is there much funding available for research opportunities at Stevens? 
So there is, um, like I said, this is usually in the form of assistantships. Um, and these assistantships, whether it's research or teaching, are primarily reserved for PhD students, but master students are able to apply for them through their department of study after their first year here at Stevens. Um, and then once you do have like a research assistantship and you're helping a faculty member with their research, oftentimes you will either get a tuition waiver and or a stipend that helps you cover your studies. Awesome. And there's a question about AI here. I know it's quite a hot topic, but is there any AI courses available to take? So there is. There are AI courses. We also have specific programs that are specific for AI, such as Applied Artificial Intelligence. Um, so that is obviously a very specific program that focuses about AI. Um, but a lot of our other uh, programs, such as computer science and all of those, touch upon AI within a course or two as well. Yeah, I, I would have imagined so. That, that's yeah. great. Um, but it will be taking over soon, I, I imagine, with the way yes. things are going. Um, so back to funding. Um, is there any financial funding help scholarships available? How would they manage that? Yep. So here at Stevens, we offer what we call the Provost Master Scholarship. This is a partial scholarship um, for our master's student that is merit-based. So you will automatically be um, considered for this scholarship as a full-time student upon application review. So when you are being considered for admission, you will automatically also be considered for scholarship. Um, like I said, it is merit-based, so it is based on your test scores, um, your undergraduate transcripts. They do take into account um, kind of your resume and things such as that, but it is very much merit-based. Okay, awesome. And lastly, uh, is there any advice on how to create a perfect resume or any cover letters when, especially when applying? Yeah, so I will say for the cover letters, um, it is very important that you kind of tailor it to the specific company that you're applying for, right? You don't want to use a generic cover letter to apply for a bunch of different jobs at different companies. Um, you really want to make sure that you're showing that company why you want to apply specifically to them. So tailor it um, to them, tailor it to their values, their goals that maybe they list in the job posting to show that you really took the time to research their company, the role, the position, and how you see yourself as a best fit for that company or um, position and really highlight that. Hey, awesome. Well, is there any last advice, maybe application dates that they have to kind of abide by? Yeah. So we um offer two intakes for our international students, the fall intake and the spring intake. Um, for anyone that is interested in the fall 2024 semester, our recommended deadline is April 15th. For anyone interested in the spring 2025 semester, um, our recommended deadline is November 15th. Um, now, these are recommended deadlines. Here at Stevens, we do operate on a rolling admission basis, meaning that although we recommend that you get your application in by these dates, if for some reason you get them in a little bit after, they still will be reviewed for admission. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for all the information, guys. I don't know if there's anything, last words you want to add or any kind of words of uh, affirmation for the, for the guys oh there's one question about economics here sorry just come in yeah. <laughs> um and says do you have a master's in economics at the school so we do not have one directly in economics within our school of business um we do have ones in um business administration information systems um management I'm trying to think business intelligence and analytics. There, so there's a lot, and I'm sure a lot of them do touch on economics, but we do not have one specifically in economics. Okay, that, that's no problem at all. And honestly, if you guys have any more questions, uh, Stevens will be reaching out to you within the next couple of days. So if you didn't get any questions answered today and that you maybe have after the webinar, then please feel free to ask them directly and we will get those over to those um, at Stevens and they will get in touch shortly. All right, yeah. well, thank you everyone for attending and thank you for your questions and thank you guys for your presentation. It was absolutely wonderful. And um, we will be in touch very soon. Thank you everyone. Sounds good, thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.